it's not easy. Like I'm having a bit of a week and um, yeah. I think it's like, okay to have some down days. It's like, I was supposed to be going to Cabo tomorrow. And I know that's a total gift, but it's something that like, when I moved to the Midwest, I moved away from the ocean to invest more into my business and like my family and things like that. But I miss the Pacific ocean. I miss, um, you know, those types of um, views. And so we just make it like a family priority to get to the ocean and to the coast. And so we're supposed to fly tomorrow. And I had to like cancel my flights and I want to show up and I love showing up and doing this, but I miss showing up like this in person and like seeing the lights come on in somebody's eyes, like in person when I'm on stage speaking and then talking with you in person afterwards. So I like, I don't think I'm mourning the loss of those things. And I've been talking to photographers. I reach out to a few of my friends like, Hey, I need some like help today. Like I'm, I'm in the, I'm in a funk and I don't want you to like yank me out, but I do need some encouragement. Like I want to learn in this place, but, and so Maggie and I were talking about this. It's like, it's okay to not be okay sometimes, you know? Yeah. And it's like, I think I don't want to miss out on those opportunities as well. Like there's so much like craziness and pain and like lots of things going on. And yet I want to be like, I'm captain positive. And I'm like, I love seeing people like show up and hustle and do their thing. But it's also like, yeah, life's kind of upside down right now too. Like it, it was snowing outside a few minutes ago and I was like, what in the world is going on? Like, come on. And yeah, I lived, I lived in Indiana for eight years. And so it's not abnormal, but it still sucks. It's April. It's like, come on, you know, like Easter, we're supposed to be outside doing like Easter egg hunts. And sometimes we're like, uh, how's the weather? Are we, is it going to be freezing? Like I'm from Southern California, you know? So it's like very different and change is hard. And one of, one of the books I read says change is hard at the beginning. It's messy in the middle and then it's beautiful by the end. And so we want to show up for you today. And I was really grateful that Maggie um, was able to come on with us and just chat legal stuff. Right. And um, so how, how, like, what's different for you, Maggie? Oh, well, I mean, I'm right, I'm right there with you. I was supposed to be in Bermuda right now shooting a destination wedding. And I feel like, yeah, life is just really upside down. And um, I'm still working from home, so it's not super different. But yep. my what my workday looks like is really different. Um, just rescheduling weddings is, is a big endeavor in and of itself. And you know, we're listening to our clients talk through their their mourning the losses of this wedding that they've planned. They might be changing their whole color schemes, or like half our guests might not be attending. And you know, we're we're listening to that. And then everybody in the industry, we're you know, we're in these groups and communities and having conversations that you know we're bearing kind of like that burden of listening to all of that and then yeah. the news. Just, yeah, it is an emotional roller coaster, and sometimes it's just okay to acknowledge that. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, I feel like it's like okay to not be okay. I don't want to be stuck here, but I also don't want to like uh, race out of it, right? Like, there's something to be learned on both sides of this. Yeah. And so it's like someday it's kind of catching up at this point. You know, I was just chatting with a buddy of mine out west, and he's in Santa Barbara, you know, and I'm like, I, he's like, it's like, he's like same person. He's a seven on the Enneagram ENFP, just like I am. So when we yeah. hang out, it's like a party, you know? And I was like, dude, I would pay so much to just be like chilling with you next to a pool, like soaking it up. Cause we, we love dreaming. We love like yeah. educating all this stuff. But I was like, we're in lockdown. That's I think it's just catching up with people. Like this is kind of the new normal right now and we're not okay with it, you know, but we got to yeah. like settle and there's so much to be had here as well. Yeah. So. There's so much community coming together right now. And I've done yeah. a couple of talks like this and I think even just like companies in the wedding industry that are stepping up and providing resources, mm -hmm. or even just like community talks about how, you know, we're all going through this similar process yeah. and figuring out what to do with weddings that are getting rescheduled and how do we work with our clients through that territory? Um, it's, you know, everyone's forming new relationships, which is really cool too. Yeah. It's different, but it's like, um, it's interesting to see like some of the big dogs, you know, like you think everything's just fine all the time. It's like, not it. They, they have emotions and they're humans as well. And they're going through some stuff. Like I work from home normally too, but not with my three kids in the house. Like yeah. in the summer we do. Um, but even then it's like, they, go to the pool and do other things while I, or I go to a co-working space. I can't go to there even, you know, or I'm on the road, you know, half the time. So interesting, a lot to be had, but I do love the community coming together. I love yeah. showing up like this, you know, it's like a secondary to um, being able to 
do it in person, but um, we were doing some of this, but now it's like, we're doing it only this way for right now, you know? Yeah. So what's your background? You, you are a photographer, but you understand yeah. the legal side of things. Why is that? Yeah. So um, it's interesting. I've had my feet in both feet fields like heavily <laughs> for the last five, six years or so. Um, I never planned and I'm a photographer, at least not full time to this extent. Law school and law was always my passion. I, you know, I did mock trial in high school and then I was pre law and political science in college. And I went and worked for the United Nations in Africa and I went to law school mm -hmm. and I clerked for a judge. And, you know, I did all the things. And at the same time, like it's, it's been weird, but I've had these like almost parallel lives and roads that just went side by side for a, a long time. Um, so my photography career started to develop along that same path. And um, in between college and law school, I started working with professional surfers. So I started traveling and I shot for like Billabong and Surfing Magazine. And I got to go to like Tahiti and Australia and Mexico and shoot in the water. Um, and then all through law school, I continued shooting um, some commercial work and then a lot of weddings. I shot about 30 weddings a year all through law school. I worked for a law firm. And then I clerked for an appellate judge. And then I finally got to a point about six months ago where I was about to go to a big law firm. They wanted my full-time commitment. My business had been growing immensely. And I just, I had to make a decision if I was going to go full-time at this big firm. And I decided that I wanted the work-life balance and lifestyle of having my own business. And I said, you know, I've only been doing this really part time. And imagine if I just, you know, I went out on my own and did this on my own. So um, I've had some small clients myself. I've set up like a virtual law firm. And, um, I've had the bars. So I'm a licensed attorney in New Jersey. And I've just kind of been trying to figure out where I wanted to take that. And I recently opened up a contract shop online and one on one consultations for clients. So um, that's been really really fun really interesting and i finally feel like you know i had these two parallel roads and they finally like together and you know i have friends with some of my law school professors and college professors on facebook and they're like you did it you found a way to bring them together and it's been cool to see that and like have the support from them too that's cool yeah that's yeah. really cool so um what we want to bring to you is education on this stuff you know um if you have questions feel free to ask them um if they're too deep um we may just take them offline so that um she can serve you well and make sure that she knows um you know where you're at and how to cover it as far as like states go and your specific contract and things like that but um actually who i was just talking to as well just like looking for a pick me up from a friend he was talking about just like somebody rescheduling and um that they're going to change it to an elopement now and want like all their money back and all that stuff. So everybody is dealing with a bunch of different things of reschedules, mm -hmm. you know, and um, either postponement or like in 2020 or postponement to 2021 potentially, or like, Hey, we don't know when our date's going to be. We're trying to work with, there's like so much stuff, right? Mm -hmm. They have to work with the location and all those things. But as a photographer, um, that is what we're showing up for. And so, um, I don't know the statistic of this, but um, I, I'm curi I'd be curious, like, what, what's your insight? What do you think, where do you think photographers are, like, getting their contracts, and what are they typically covering? Where are they getting them from? Yeah. Um, so it's been interesting, because I've had a lot of talks over the last couple weeks um, with photographers, videographers, planners. I was surprised to hear where they're getting their contracts from. I feel like a lot of them are using the templates that are in their client management system. Um, some are purchasing them from other photographers who aren't necessarily mm -hmm. lawyers, which makes me really nervous. They should not be selling legal advice <laughs> if you're not an attorney. Um, and there are other lawyer photographers out there who offer, who have like contract shops. So I think. And also another another place too where people are getting their contracts is they're going to a law office um, with someone they know and developing a one on one contract with another attorney, um, which I've also just heard feedback that that has been a little bit difficult because they don't really understand the photographer side of things, even though they're 
very affluent in the law side of things. So um, I feel like people are getting their contracts from all over and some people even write them, them themselves. But I feel like the best place to get them is if you can you know, buy from a shop where um, it's a creative lawyer who has their feet heavily planted in both sides and understand mm -hmm. You know the protections that we really need and the situations that we deal with as well as how the legal side of things and how they should be written yeah i've been in the shoes of like of a, of a photographer you know i ph photographed for like 15 years so i've been in situations where it's like you never I, I never wanted to have to go to the contract you know but it is but then when when a situation and you know i shot 500 weddings so i had situations where i had to mm -hmm. and having a solid contract though is like so important and and currently in my business like i'm working with other companies and we have ndas and all those types of things there's standards out there and then regularly like i'm just getting ready to sign a contract with like um employees and things like that and some of them are yeah. specific right like contractors versus w-2s and all that stuff yeah. again i don't i don't love um having to call my attorney, but I'm so grateful for them in that moment, you know? And so yeah. it's like, I think doing the work up front and, and even taking a look now and saying like, oh, well, I have 10 contracts out or 30 contracts out for this year and they're going to get resistance. They're going to get pushback and we're going to have to go to them and just see what they say and how they can legally yeah. hold up, you know? Yeah. So I, I guess we could start there. And then I'd love to also like kind of wrap up, um, with like, what does the future look like? How, how can they um, have a thing in place for it's like any reschedule? Of course, like we we hope there's not another pandemic, but we don't know. We can't see the storms coming. Sometimes, sometimes we can see them. Either yeah. way, we kind of like I'm I on, on the side of things where it's like I want to make sure that my ship is kind of like tied down for the storms, and um, before I get there is a better place than like being out on the deck when the water's coming over and you're like oh no like i didn't take care of that shoot now i gotta take care of that you know one of my a kind of a silly um thing that just popped in my head is like my living room is right next to uh there's these like three big windows that look out onto my deck in my backyard and we have tons of weather here in indiana and we love hanging out on the deck we have a little fireplace out there and i you know a barbecue and stuff but the worst feeling for some reason is like we'll get these like crazy storms that i don't watch the weather all the time and i yeah. see it coming down i look out and my furniture is not covered right it's like that's the worst time to go out there because then it's raining yeah. like super hard it's cold and i'm trying to cover this furniture that's like already a little bit wet you mm -hmm. know and it's like i kind of like compare it to this moment right now where it's like i wonder how my contract is with this client that's asking yeah. me to read or asking for their money back you know mm -hmm. and so what are what are some things that they can respond with um, today um, let's say a client's yeah. like hey, I'm gonna reschedule um, what does that look like yeah well just just to start I want to say that contracts can be a beautiful thing <laughs> um, and I feel like they should be written in a way where they're a guide to the client relationship and it's almost making the relationship with um, you know, your clients a lot easier. And a lot of the feedback that I've gotten is I've written it almost like an FAQ. So it's like not as scary to have to go to the contract and be like, yeah. oh, we have to look at this contract again. Like we can make them fun and pretty and nice and cool. easy to read. Um, but I think that what a lot of people are looking at now is um, terms that apply in regards to rescheduling and postponement. Um, hear that timer? Just barely, yeah. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Real life here, people. Yeah, right, yeah. Um, so I feel like a lot of people are dealing with rescheduling policies, postponement, cancellation. Some clients just want to straight up cancel. Um, and it's all going to come down to the individual contract and what each person's contract says. Um, so I think it's really important to take a good look at your contracts with your current clients and and see legally what you're obligated to do what mm -hmm. if you're obligated to refund any money if you're allowed to keep deposits if it says non-refundable um what your force majeure clauses say um and then moving forward if clients are rescheduling one thing that you can do is send them an entirely new contract for their new date. So mm. now is the best time that we can use hindsight to update our contracts to include pandemics and rescheduling policies and cancellation mm. policies. And instead of sending an addendum, we can send that entirely new contract to the client that says, here's our updated contract. Here's the contract for this date that you now want to reserve. 
great, they sign the contract if they have to reschedule or postpone a second time, which is something that we might realistically be looking at, unfortunately, mm -hmm. um, then at least we have some rescheduling policies in there that cover us now in hindsight, like if we're gonna yeah. charge a scheduling fee and what that looks like. Um, I know I have That's clients. Cool. Yeah, and I know so, I- So what I'm saying in this moment is like, it's an opportunity to potentially, yeah, they wanna reschedule. Let's go ahead and refresh our contract because yeah. we couldn't refresh see this coming. Yeah, that's that's cool. Yeah. I, I like that. Yeah, and I yeah. think it's a good, you know, how to reschedule 24. We, we're a big studio. We have 86 weddings this year, and I've rescheduled 24 clients so far without issue. They've signed the new contract. It's really clean and easy for them to read. They see me doing these talks and stuff, and they sign on to them, and I've gotten feedback from my clients, too, like, thanks for a great contract. It's really, really been helpful to know exactly what happens if I have to reschedule again. And they've all been really supportive too. So I think it's a really good opportunity for you to think through your policies and, mm -hmm. you know, think about what you want everything to look like. Yeah. I think it's just part of the experience ultimately. And they, they do like, subconsciously or consciously, they expect us to be the professional in the relationship. You know, you don't want to go to a place where it's like, um, well, let me, you know, I, I run things by my attorney, um, but not all like people that are planning a wedding have an attorney, you know, like, let me run this by my attorney real quick. It's like, they're like, they, they want to read it and understand it enough and know that they're trusting you as the professional and that it's based on the relationship usually is one of the biggest reasons that I believe I was hired for. And that's what I want to ultimately serve them with is like me, my personality, my experience. And uh, my friend um, had to reschedule and it's this kind of like tougher client that's like changing everything and wanting all their money back. And the contract doesn't say that. Mm -hmm. And they were responding back and forth. And it got to a point where they started to ask for feedback from just other people. Like, what would you do with this? You know? And what was cool was somebody spoke up and just yeah. said like, Hey, this, this doesn't come across like you and your personality um, in text. And so why don't you just shoot a video real quick and just say like, Hey, I, I, I care for you and I want what's best for you. Um, I want to resolve this. Like, I don't want this to go yeah. like South. Um, what can we do to work together? Cause I still care for you. I want to serve you. You hired me to do it. And now that's, you know, everything's changing. I get it, right. but I need to protect my other clients that may want the same thing, you know, and myself and my own business and things like that. So like, what, what do you think about that? Like, how do you respond in a way that it's not like, my attorney is going to call you, you know, cause you still probably you're going to have to show up and shoot a lot of these weddings. Right. Yeah, no, I, I think that was great advice that was given to your friend. And I think nobody wants to go to court. It's never going to be worth it. Money yeah. wise to fight over a retainer. Um, if you can meet your client in the middle or mm -hmm. find a way to resolve these issues, that's going to be the best case scenario for everybody involved. And I do think it's important to have stringent policies up front that, you know, retainers are not refundable or you're charging a rescheduling fee. Um, but if it gets to a point where you're getting a ton of pushback over what, a couple of thousand dollars, is it right. worth your health? Is it worth, how can you meet them in the middle? Um, can you offer them a credit for, you can't shoot their wedding date that they've rescheduled to. Can you offer to design their album for them if they're if their photographer will allow it and create their wedding album? Can you offer a post wedding session? Like what what can you do to work with them so that you can still keep your business healthy and sustainable and not refund the full amount, but maybe just meet them somewhere in the middle? Yeah, that's good. I like that. You know, it's like that's partly why I have the attorney that I do for kiss. It's like, I know that they're for me, but they're also like not racing to court every five seconds. Cause there's always stuff, you know, with like all different businesses that you can, you know, um, mm -hmm. end up in court or like threatening and stuff like that. It's like, I, he knows that like, that's not what I want to do in business. Yeah. And it's like, I, I, I'm trying to build this on the back of relationships, you know? And, uh, when the pressure steps in, you know, it's typically not with like photographers. I haven't had issues with photographers, but it's like other businesses or, you know, when the pressure comes on, that is like, sometimes it can like, we can respond a a as like the best version of us or like the defensive, like fight flight person, you know? And so like, what's it worth? I love that you said that, like, is it worth your mental health? Like yeah. this money? And sure there's times yeah. where we absolutely need the money, but it's also like trying to take a step back and saying like, okay, 
what is this all like what what am i trying to cause and be in this relationship i think that's good stuff yeah. you know so um on it too if you know if you're having a dispute with a client you can just take a day or two to breathe and yeah figure it out <laughs> Even during those times, I think, you know, I, I uh, came from like a background of very like unhealthy um, emergency thinking. And um, still to this day, there's times where I'm like, is this really an emergency? Because most things we think are an emergency aren't even at this level of like they are asking for their money back. It's like, OK, do I have to yeah. respond right now when I'm like heated and like a little bit like panicky? It's yeah. like, I'm not going to respond how I want to, you know, so like it, that's good yeah. advice. Like take a little bit of time, you know, like respond from like, hey. I'm still for you. Like, I'm stoked that you're getting married. Let's like not make this a terrible thing. Like I still want to celebrate that and you may be changing it, but like, yeah. is there other ways that can serve you? Um, this is my business. Mm -hmm. That's why I have a contract. None of us saw this coming. How can we try and make this a win-win for both of us? Can I serve you with an yeah. album? Can I still, can I shoot your um, elopement um, versus the yeah. full wedding and like adjust it accordingly and stuff like that, you know? So yeah. that's good. And we're all here, we're all in this. It's such like an interesting balance because we want these like really protective contracts so we can protect ourselves and the art, the subjective artwork that we do and our businesses and the decisions we make to run our business. But we're all doing it because we really want to be able to best serve our clients. Like we're all yeah. here because we're not like sharks who are out to just like So we can run a business that protects our clients and I think that's important to communicate to our clients too so they know like you know we're not out to get them we're we're trying to shoot their events we want to be there for them we are here to serve them that's why we got into this yeah yeah I think that's really good advice like in it in lead that conversation I would encourage you to lead that conversation because again they're looking to us to yeah. be the pro it's like hey I'm for you. I, I want this to be still a good um, relationship that we have because we have committed to something. Uh, I want to serve you well. And one of my favorite sayings that I've heard from one of my friends of kind of like taking it on my own, as long as we are serving people, we will always have more than enough work to do because there's always a place to serve in it. And it's um, how we serve. You know, it's one of the ways that we measure ourselves and how I measure my success. It's not just financially, but it's my purpose and how I'm showing up and how I'm serving in that purpose. Purpose. And mm -hmm. these two are hard to measure the whole like serving the purpose and like how we are doing that. It's not like yeah. with the financial, it's like, yeah, I made X amount of dollars. It's so easy to measure, but the purpose and like how we show up in that and how we serve is like, it, it helps me sleep at night. You know, it helps me like mentally, like I, mm -hmm. I when I get in a funk, I'm like, okay, what's, what else is going on? You know, um, how am I measuring myself? What am I chasing? Am I running too fast? Am I not running fast enough? All those things come into things. And then when it's under pressure like this, um, it's like, oh boy, like, I hope we're in a good spot. And so like our mental health, like I preach on that nearly as much as I preach on like albums and stuff like that. So, yeah. um, I love so yeah, I like, <laughs> what was that? I love that we're on the same page with that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Important. Yeah, it is. It is a gift to, um, I think like whether you're a photo, like a creative, an attorney, like a police officer, uh, whatever, like everyone has opportunities to serve and in a creative situation, it's like, um, we want to show up and do what we do, you know, and create and, mm -hmm. and have this experience and all that stuff. But right now everything's like shaken up. It's like, okay, how can we still show up? You know, like the creativity has kind of been stripped away from us right now. And it's like, mm -hmm. it all starts to land on, the documents that we have paperwork and contracts and like the emails that we've written back and forth and all that stuff. It's like, Oh, like I don't get to show up and like take some amazing photos and like get to that place. So it's like, how are we going to show up as an entrepreneur at this point? You know? So like, how do we do that going forward? What would you say? Like, um, what are things that should be like in a contract? Um, not for this, just in general. Oh, a lot. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> There's so much that should go into your contract. And it's been interesting. I've reviewed so many contracts over the last couple weeks um, mm -hmm. for friends and other vendors. And there's a lot of like basic contract terms that I've found are missing rights, copyright, model release, venue, um, indemnification, liabilities. All, there's so much that, that needs to go into a contract. But um, 
in terms of like, I feel like maybe like something practical that we can do to get ahead of this with our clients as we're mm -hmm. working through our, our, um, our new contracts and revising them and developing them is just, you know, pulling out the pieces of our contract that are already included and coming up with the policies and procedures in regards to COVID-19, making a static page on our website that outlines this for our clients and emailing it to all of them ahead of time, especially if you want your clients to work with you for availability. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like it's really important to communicate that to clients ahead of time. And like, if you don't want to lose anything you paid, including your deposit, make sure you're working with us for availability and send that out to, you know, you don't want to freak out brides in October, but right now mm -hmm. I feel like that's kind of applicable to end of June, July, August. People are starting to wonder what's going to happen if they have to reschedule. Um, and I think that's something that that's kind of practical that you can do right now is just to think through those mm -hmm. policies, put them up on your website on a static hidden page um, or like a hidden blog post and to send that out to your clients. So if they're asking and wondering what your policies are, what your contract says, you can, you know, highlight and quote your, your current contract, um, put what your policies are, what their options are if they have to reschedule, and then just encourage them ahead of time to work with you for availability. I love that. Uh, what I really hear you saying is like communicate well to your clients, yeah. like get ahead of it for the ones that you can get ahead of. And yeah. then the ones that they're not, um, you know, that's really going to rely on what the contract currently says. But then in that uh, potential, like best case scenario, they are rescheduling on the date you're available. It's like, this is a great time to refresh that contract in a way that's like healthy for them as well. Like a contract, it, like I think the best contracts go both ways. Like this is yeah. what, um, from me and this is your protection as well you know and so um, a deposit locks in your date so I'm going to show up for that date or sorry retainer I think um, is how I had to say it when I had contracts yeah. for photography um, so that it wasn't like oh I lost her so I'll, it's okay I'll, uh, let me put you back in there we go it just it dropped off no big deal um, it was real short um, so yeah like just getting the verbiage right, you know, like, um, uh, but protecting both sides and like getting ahead of it. I mean, that is, uh, it's just, I think it's such an opportunity right now to like, Hey, I'm a professional. Um, yeah. and I'm getting ahead of this. Your date's in August. Um, I'm a little nervous. You're a little nervous. We're not sure. Um, let's start thinking through scenarios. This is what the contract currently says. Um, so the, here's what your options will be. If things stay the same way, let's go this route. If, if, um, I get to show up and shoot your wedding, I'm going to be happy just to be outside my house too and photographing again. So yeah. that's what we're hopeful for, but let's start thinking about it. At least we're communicating. It's, I, I just don't like surprises, especially when it comes to financially financial surprises typically end up in like a distrust and getting somebody's trust back that we hardly know that are clients that have hired us that we haven't even been able to serve them with what we do like as as uh the creative um it's just like a tough uphill battle from then on to like get that trust back you know um so i go ahead <laughs> i i love what your friend said about sending a video instead mm -hmm. of a email because i think email can come across so i don't know unfriendly you can read it four different ways you know yeah. people can read it however they want to read it especially if you're talking about contracts you're like well my con my contract says this and if you can hop on a call and humanize yourself or even just like record a video um i think it's you know it's helpful for for clients to know that we're on their side especially if you you haven't worked with them yet i actually had to say to one of my clients i somebody was a little concerned about having that rescheduling fee in there. They're rescheduling for the first time. They wanted to know if I could revise my current contract to state that there would be no fee if they have to reschedule for a second time for a September date. And I explained to them why I do have to charge a rescheduling fee if they move to 2021. Um, I explained why. And, um, you know, I just said to them, like, I know you haven't met me yet. We haven't worked together. We haven't even been on video. But when you get to know me and my heart, like, you will you will know I'm here to serve my clients. And you can read all of the reviews. And I know contracts sound scary. But, um, you know, I think you'll, you'll be pleasantly surprised when you meet me versus reading my contract. <laughs> yeah. It, that's an that's a really interesting thing that I hadn't really thought of. It's like in this situation, they don't really know us, but um, 
the thing about creatives in general that I've learned at least is that it's hard to say no. It's hard to deal with controversy. It's hard for that for humans in general, but yeah. um, as a creative, especially like we want to please people typically. And um, the majority of people on the planet, 70% of people on the planet are guardians and nurturers. And we just, sometimes we will just, we would, we'll bleed out before, Right. You know, taking care of somebody else and we just don't take care of ourselves. That's human nature so many times. So we have to be reminded on a plane, like put your mask on before you help the person next to you or you may not be around to help the person next to you. Um, so like in this situation, um, saying no is OK, meaning like, hey, in the next hard. contract, um, I don't yeah. want to reschedule fee. Like, well, of course, I can ask for that, but I will respect you for saying no to me. Like, yeah, I clearly like you have a business to run and I'm asking for a day out of your life. Like if I really thought about it and wasn't selfish in this situation, I'd be like, Maggie has like a uh, family and friends and whatever that I'm asking for her time to come be with us. And so like, that's what we're ultimately ordering is like X amount of hours away from what your normal life is. I'll pay you to be with me. And yeah. then things get rescheduled for whatever reason. It's like, well, you still set that time aside and, and right. you, you can't, you, 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 you've said you won't travel, you won't be on vacation. You know, you're going to show up on that day. Like in the grand scheme of things in like a non-contract based thing, it's easy to see, but in the heat of it, it's okay. Like it yeah. is okay to say no. And to say like, yeah, well my contract says this and, and this is why, like yeah. I, I hate when situations like this come up, but I also like, I have, you know, X amount of other people I'm trying to serve as well. And, and I've said no to other people for that date as well, you know, so it's I, okay. I think it's important too. something that I made sure to very thoroughly lay out in my contract templates is it is more than just the day. Like we have that day that we are holding the date for them and turning down other business opportunities, not only for that day, but maybe for that weekend or that week, or maybe you only take mm -hmm. 10 weddings a year. So it's not just that day. Like we're turning down business yeah. opportunities. Companies. And there's so much more that they're paying for than just that day of service. Mm -hmm. So in my contract templates, I really lay out, you know, we are money is paid, including the retainer covers client meetings, venue walkthroughs. If you do that research on the venue, mm -hmm. um, client timeline, development and revisions, insurance, preparing for the wedding date as far as, you know, gear that we're going to invest in or education that we're going to invest in because of that expectation of work that we have. So like there's so much more that that deposit is paying for than just that day of work. And I don't think clients always fully can grasp that. And they're like, oh, well, mm -hmm. if you're not working, then like what? And you're just getting to keep $1,500 or whatever it is. Um, that doesn't really make sense. And it's more than that. It's that expectation of work. And then there is front end work, depending on like how much you put into that front end with your clients that, you know, you've already invested in time wise. Mm -hmm. Um, I have a virtual assistant, so I see hard costs of that. Like I, I pay my virtual assistant to input clients into our, our client management system to schedule and send out calls and timeline revisions and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And you know, that deposit's been that deposit has the value of it has already been allocated in my mind towards um mm -hmm. you know all of that that front end work. And then about a third of that is the day of work and then about a and you know turning down other work. And then about a third of that is that work afterwards yeah. of editing and post processing and whatever might be included product wise. So yeah. I don't know. I remember I remember reading that just recently. It's kind of like gone around a little bit, but like when you spent when you pay me for 30 minutes or an hour of my time, um, yeah. the reason you pay what you pay is because of the X amount of years that I've put into this. My craft, my business, like like everything, pricing, yeah. like when you're building a business, it's like I remember like I would shoot 60 uh, weddings a year, which was was kind of crazy for sure. But people be like, Yeah, you only really work like 64 days a year, you know, and it's like, mm, no, that's not how this works. Like I've worked so hard so that I can work on those 64 days, like photographing weddings, but like, there's so much more that goes into it. Like t wow. telling a pastor, Oh, you only work one day a week on Sundays, you know, and all that yeah. stuff. It's like, there's so much more that goes into running a business and like our, our retirement. And for some reason, like so many people think like, Oh, you're just a photographer. And so yeah. it's like, well, yeah, like, but this is what I've chose to do for a living. And I have, 
uh, I need to have an attorney and a CEO and uh, an, an, an assistant and other shooters and somebody editing my photos or whatever it is. It's like, there's so much more that goes into it. Yeah. Yeah. But you, you had another good point too, that I just wanted to touch on. Cause I think, um, one thing I've been advising people to do is, you know, we were talking about how we're, people pleasers and it's really hard to say no to clients. So if you're, I feel like if you're in that situation, one thing you can do is just say, we're not taking phone calls right now. We're only scheduling them and, um, mm -hmm. you know, trying to keep everything either in writing or like, if you feel like you have to have that personal touch, sending a video message so that way um, sometimes it's right room or, you know, both, both spouses and um, a, maybe a parent, or sometimes like I get CC'd by a father of a bride who's an attorney. And, you know, we're just this little old, like, creative person who wants the people please and make them happy. And it's so easy to get pushed over. So um, I, I've been advising some of my friends to say things are so crazy right now. You're trying to keep everything in writing so that you don't lose any rescheduling of dates. And um, they can schedule a call with you where you can really have already thought through what they're going to be asking for or get that in writing first so you can think through it and develop your policies and not be put on the spot or pressured to say something you don't agree with. And I've also encouraged people to make, if you're just a one-man studio or photographer, make a second email that's really just yours that's like studio at or admin at and send an email from your virtual assistant that says no so that it's not you and you can still have a good relationship with them and you can come off as just bigger than this one person because I don't know why but you know we accept it when American Airlines gives us a credit of <laughs> you know, whatever our flight was for this month and we can't travel, but we ex expect these small businesses to give refunds. And I don't know, it's just, it's yeah. going to put a lot of business and it's hard. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's an interesting time. And, and, um, like you could see that, you know, anxiety and depression are a real thing anyway. Um, and then under this, it's like the uncertainty of all this is, is really brought out like the worst in some people, you know, and, um, I, I try and avoid, I, I get enough news that I can make a response as a business and as a human and as like a, a parent and all the things that I want, like want to make sure that we're, we're good. I get enough information, but I can only handle so much. Yeah. And, um, under this pressure, we get to still show up as humans for one another. And so when I see people just like really attacking one another, even just like on Facebook or Instagram or something like that, it's like, Hey, like we're still humans. Like, like don't bring all your crap and like throw it at me. Um, but like, how can we respond and, and love one another? I really, really appreciated the person that said like, Hey, video them. Cause that is not who you want to be. Um, yeah. like just send them a video because I think it'll just like calm it down when they realize, Hey, there's a human on the other side of this. Like, Oh yeah, yeah we're humans, you know? And, um, the other part was like, um, I have a friend that um, I do workshops with from time to time. I'll come in and just educate on albums, but they do not give out their phone number. They don't give out their cell number to their clients, to like the coordinator um, because they want a paper trail of everything. And they get made fun of all the time in workshops um, at weddings at times, but they respond as fast as a phone call, but they want a paper trail of everything, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, um, at this point, I bet a lot of, a lot less people are making fun of them because if your client has your phone number, I'm fine with that. A lot of people have my phone number, but they're just calling and a paper trail is very important at this point. You know, like a, he said, she said litigation is I've been involved in that before. Not nearly as good as when everything is written out. It's so easy to point back to these things. So on that note, um, like where can people find you? Um, do you do like um, do you charge, uh, like a fee for like current, um, contract reviews and then where mm -hmm. can they find your, um, your shop, you know, so that they can like compare to what they have and maybe like get, get some legitimacy in their own contracts. Yeah. yeah so, um, uh, my Instagram is just my name, Maggie, M-A-G-I Fisher, F-I-S-H-E-R. There's no C. <laughs> Everyone always wants to put the C in Fisher. Um, and the website is the same same thing, maggiefisher.com. Um, I have templates up there right now for photographers. I'm going to be adding some for videographers and planners in the next week or so. And I do offer one-on-one -on -one consultations. And with all of this stuff going on, I've been able to 
answering so many DM questions and just trying to serve as many people as I can without getting mm -hmm. into too nitty gritty and just guiding people to resources. And I'm more than happy to do that because this is this is like the combination of my two passions. And right now it's just yeah. an extra little passion project for me and you know photography is our our main business but it, i'm happy to you know have this and be able to serve others and provide resources right now yeah yeah i think it's like one of those things like i've educated for a long time and there's times where i'm like hey my um attorney wants to come talk contracts and uh, my cpa wants to come talk finance whenever it was like super businessy it was really really hard to get photographers there now yeah. is a time clearly where it's like, um, and it was like on us, like really, like what I've learned is like, we need to do it in a creative way to where they can like hear us. Um, and yeah. we've come a long way in that area, which is why I like love having attorneys. And I've had my CPA on last week and stuff like that, because everyone's like all ears right now. Like, Oh, is my business like where it needs to be to get me to the other side, you know? Um, but like, I love that you're a creative and have spent so much time like um, doing the attorney side of things and in the law, you know, because it's like the law is there. And I've, I've, uh, it's been like in the last maybe 10 years where um, before I was, I was pretty unhealthy in a lot of ways, uh, mentally and things like that, physically as well. But ultimately, like I had issues with authority and, um, and would question those things and just wanted to like fly by the seat of my pants. But then when I got like, put up against it, it was like, oh, wow, I wish I would have done what I needed to, to like protect myself and my family or whatever it was. But yeah. it, now it can be done in a way that it's like, hey, you know what, like, it is there for a reason. It is there, like, um, as a professional entrepreneur, like a legitimate individual that wants to like do business. It's just one of the things we need. And yeah. um, it will be done in a creative way, meaning like, hey, all the legal is in there but then you get to still show up in the relationship. And sometimes, so many times, I believe, a proper like operating agreement, proper contract with you and your clients actually keeps the relationship what it's supposed to be. Like, hey, mm -hmm. that is there for a reason. And this is just what it says. Like, yeah, I'd love to like, there's grace and things that you can do individually, but it's also like, hey, this is what's expected. And nobody wants yeah. to end up in court. You even know, I, I, almost every attorney that I've talked to is like, hey, you know who's no. going to make money in court is me. And that is it. And you get a button at the end of the day. Um, I was sued by, it, it's a it's a messy thing, but it was like family and stuff like that. And um the attorneys, I had two attorneys that I went to for advice and they're like, you get a button that says, I told you so. And it's going to cost you X amount of dollars. It's like, just figure it out, like fight it out. And like, you don't want to end up in this place. Well, we're in that place, meaning like some people are questioning our contracts and what can we do? I think like show up in the relationship, um, try and keep it personal, uh, personable, like with video or whatever's needed. Um, but like, it's a great time to look back at your contracts and say like, what do they really say? You know, there's many a times I'm not like, this is not a, um, I'm not proud of this, but there's many a times where I've just signed the contract because I'm like, I don't want to read this stuff. But then yeah. when you go question, you're like, shoot, what did I sign? You know, now is the time we get to read all through our, especially the contract we create for our business. Like, um, you know, reach out have Maggie help you and say like, yeah, what you got is good. Or, Hey, you could work on this. Or I would suggest this for what you're trying to accomplish. Um, now is the time to like, so that as we get to the other side of this, um, we know what we're offering our current clients as well as like our future clients have like being able to sleep at night and having confidence and knowing that we're taking care of is a huge thing for us mentally. And it's mm -hmm. okay to be the professional in the relationship and have like legitimate contracts where I've had that as well. I shot 500 weddings. I had multiple times. Oh, my dad's a, uh, a lawyer and wants you to change this in your contract. And I was like, I don't even know what my contract says. But then when I took the time to like, bring on somebody like you and say like, Hey, I I'm confident in my contract and this is why it says what it does. When the dad wanted to talk or mom wanted to talk about like, Hey, I'm an attorney. And why does it say this? It's like, I could confidently say like, because this is what I do. This is my profession. And this is this, you know? And right. so I think now is a great time to look at that. Thanks for taking the time to be on here. Um, what, what's yeah. like a little bit of like encouragement that you can offer like advice, encouragement and an educational purpose that, um, that kind of like just covers them in, in like, um, in a peaceful way. <laughs> 
Oh, that's a hard one. I think just like we were talking about in the beginning, just giving yourself grace for mm -hmm. working through all of these situations for rescheduling any weddings that you're rescheduling is a lot of work. Um, it's additional work on top of what we're normally used to. And I think just, you know, being gracious with yourself and letting yourself like go through the emotions and you not putting too much pressure on yourself to be super productive or, you know, looking at what everyone else is doing on social media right now, all the courses they're putting out or anything else. And, you know, just giving yourself some, some time to work through all of this. Cause it's, it's a lot, it's a lot for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I think just humanizing this all is like, Hey, I'm sorry. Yeah. Cause there's a lot more work for you for the bride and groom. And it's a lot more work for me. So like, um, I get that and I want what's best for you. And just like humanizing it, I think is like such great and like going into it with grace and being like, Hey, I want to serve. Um, and, uh, I know things are crazy. Um, but like, let's get through this together. Like we're on the same team. Sometimes my wife and I have to remind each other that like, we're like at each other right. about something we're doing with one of our kids. It's like, we both want what's best for the kid. And we just happen to have a different style at how we do it. But we're like, we're on the same team, but it feels like we're tugging like in a tug of war against each other. And it's like, that's not doing anybody good. Like yeah. we are for you and for your marriage and your wedding and all this stuff. Like let's try and move in that direction together. I know finances is a part of this. Um, so let's figure all this out and see if we can make it work. Go into it with grace. I love that. Mm -hmm. So Thanks for being on. Um, I, uh, we, we will post in the comments like where they can find you and, um, and uh, any, any um, links to your uh, shop and things like that will be in here. But thanks so much for being on here. This was great. Yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Sure thing. See you guys, everybody. We will uh, be on again in about an hour. And um, I'll be on with Tony in about an hour. But thanks for being on. Put any questions down here. We'll, we'll respond or reach out um, um, personally. You can DM her. That'd be great.